I think a huge percentage of TMPers all over the world would love to spend more time in the woods uh, or in the wild places wherever they live. Maybe it's the beaches, the deserts, or the woods or wilderness areas that are by their house or where they live. And uh, that's what I try to do in the Nut and Fancy project. Hey guys, Nut and Fancy, we're going to talk about another subject I'll get to in just a second. Um, but we would all like to do that and make time for it and go and do those adventures. And uh, in TMP, what I try to do is roll those adventures in, make them foundational to a lot of the reviews that I roll in on uh, my tabletop, you know, and share that information with you. Very cool, fun, and adventurous and memorable. That's another key aspect and foundational to the Nut and Fancy project. We can't always do that. A lot of TMPers and good folks all around the world fi find themselves locked into the city environment, into the urban environment. That's where they have to work. Perhaps that's where they have to live just by virtue of what country they're in and their situation in life. Thousands and thousands of people fall into that situation. Excuse me. I've spent some time talking about how to address maybe wilderness survival. Um, according to my perspective and my experience talking about some survival kit options and now we're going to move into the realm of the urban survival kit, a la Nut and Fancy style. There's so much to talk about here, and I'm going to spend the very first part of this before we go to the tabletop, showing the items, explaining the philosophy behind them, according to me, my experience, um, to set the stage for this review. First off, I think a high percentage of dudes watching this video or having taken the time to tune in are very much attuned to the fact that society is somewhat delicate, okay? And I'm not being negative here, I'm being a realist. That there are things in society that have to be in place for our economy to work. And it can go south. There can be a cessation of services. You know, it could be gasoline. Um, the mere loss of which would just basically shut down the entire economy and throw it into a tailspin. Just energy. If we lost energy and the capability to fill our tanks with gasoline, food stops being delivered, aircraft stop flying, all kinds of bad things happen with that alone. Terrorist attacks. Okay, We saw this sadly in 2001 with the attacks in New York City. And some of what I'm going to discuss today is kind of keeping those attacks in mind. If we have more of the same coming, maybe how to extricate yourself and perhaps others from those situations. Um, but yeah, there's some bad things that can happen and sometimes the city is probably the last place you want to be when it happens. Because, well, for a lot of reasons. One, one is they're a population center and large concentrations of people tend to make targets. So that could be a terrorist attack, um, heaven forbid, attack nuke being set off. Gosh, it'd just be awful. There's of, you know, dozens of ways that they could attack our population centers and you might find yourself caught up in it again. Um, so that's kind of foundational. So it is a reality that can happen, that it has happened in the past. Um, could be rioting for whatever reason. The loss of electricity within us in the city. We've seen that on the eastern seaboard in the United States and other parts of the world. Um, you know, and the evil elements in society, when they lose rule of law, we've talked about that a lot, haven't we? They just kind of cut loose. They cut loose. And uh, WROL, without rule of law, starts to reign, and it gets ugly really quick. Um, so keep that in mind. It is reality. It can happen. The kit I'm going to show you strives to address some of those possibilities. It is impossible to address all of the possibilities um, to really any, uh, I, I don't want to say realistic, but uh, thorough level. It's just impossible. I'm going to introduce a term here. I'm going to use it when I start talking about survival kits, my bug out kit philosophy, all those things. And it's S-A-W-C, space and weight constrained, okay, or constraints, space and weight constraints kind of like firepower and mobility, which I've talked about for the last year and a half. It's the same concept, but some people will say, well, why did you choose this? Why did you not choose that? Generally, it's SAWC, okay? 
because you're going to have to make some choices which for you are going to be individual in nature, what's important to you, what do you want, what capabilities do you want, how much weight you're willing to carry, how much space this sucker has to fit into, and SAWC is going to be the order of the day on every item you choose. Um, I wish I had more time to go watch more videos. Uh, I really don't. I mean, I'm striving so hard to put my product out there and keep pressing on with the goals I have. This is one of them, to put out the Urban Survival Kit series by Nothing Fancy. Uh, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time and I don't have a lot of free time. I say that because I'd really like to see what else is out there, you know, and I think there's some other quality people and individuals out there that have a lot of good things to say on this subject. And I'm not, you know, by any means purporting to be the expert on urban survival. Uh, I've lived a lot of living in my life. I understand history. I understand the behavior of mankind in bad situations. I've seen it firsthand. I understand the mindset that is needed for survival. Uh, I believe in adapting and overcoming very difficult situations. I've done so personally many times in my life. I know gear of all sorts, knives, guns, backpacks. You've seen it all in review. All that's brought to the table from my own perspective when I talk about urban survival. Okay, And the kit I'm going to show you may or may not work for you. It may not be a kit that that addresses all of your particular needs and your own legalities. That's, up again, up to you. Some of the things I'm going to show you are not legal in your area. They may not be legal in your building. It might be a free fire zone. Okay? We've talked about that, haven't we? Uh, crying out loud. We still have them, though. They're not going away. In fact, they're probably multiplying. Um, that's up to you, though. Um, but what it might do is just jog your way of thinking on how to adapt a kit for your own needs. Um, you know, if you decide, hey, I want to make a kit just like that, just like Nut and Fancies, rock on. I'm going to give you a list of items there in the sidebar as best and as thorough as I can later on. You know, when a website comes up, I'll have a Word document that you guys can download that and, uh, you know, use it. Foundational to your own preparations. Also, I also think in a lot of ways it's like my survival, uh, my first aid kits I talked about. Remember my level one first aid kit video? You're going to see that in this kit or and the level two first aid kit series. I said that they are a snapshot in time. They're evolutionary in, in their existence. Uh, my good friend, USNER doc, emergency room doctor, kind of like the medical expert of the Nut and Fancy Project. Hey doc, thanks for the support. Love you. Uh, in a cool way, of course, um, but great dude, and he and I have discussed, and, and like he's had some really good vids come out on suturing, expertise I do not have, okay, and what did I do to my first aid kit? I evolved it, okay, I incorporated a better suturing kit in my first aid um, capabilities according to expertise that I've gained from people who are smarter than me, and there's lots of them, and I learned from those people continuing to refine and improve my own skills and that's what we're going to do in a survival sense so what the kid I'm going to show you is a snapshot in time you know two years from now I may be thinking differently because of what I've learned what I've seen and maybe new technologies that's always a player things may become lighter more compact that offer the same capabilities okay battery technologies lighting capabilities tool technologies all these things could shrink and make our urban survival kit more compact with the same uh, same way to address all the contingencies and again I want to reinforce there's no way you can put a kit together that will address all those contingencies okay there's going to just no way um, and don't think it's going to make you bulletproof either and not bulletproof in the literal sense but in the sense that oh man I've got a survival kit man I can just do anything um, no what it's going to do is elevate your capabilities to the point that you have a higher likelihood of number one taking care of yourself and that's job one you have to take care of yourself because if you don't do that you can't help others right and then number two helping others it's going to give you kind of a leg up um, and you will be amazed at how many people around you in your urban setting are completely caught flat-footed by such a huge emergency just like 9-11 they are going to be blown away, just like I talked about in a first aid story. And they're dumbfounded. They don't know how to react. 
they're in shock. And hopefully you have the mental preparation, the mental commitment, and the confidence in your ability and your gear system that you can persevere and prevail in that situation. And if you do so, they're going to look to you. You're going to be the leader in that situation. Um, I Just by virtue of you watching this video, you probably already are. In your workplace, where you are, they're going to look to you and say, this guy's squared away, we're following him. Okay, just like Poseidon Adventure or something. Um, so contingencies, preparing for them, doing the best we can to persevere through them. The goal also is to survive, okay? Uh, surviving is not the same as living comfortably in a lot of situations, and some people confuse that. You can survive and be extremely uncomfortable. You can be injured, uh, you can be bleeding uh, to a certain degree, and you can survive. Uh, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna survive to live another day and every situation is different exactly how we're going to do that. You know, do we want to leave the urban setting as fast as we can? I want to talk about what my recommendation is to do that, already out there in the Nut Fancy project. Um, or do we want to stay and just hunker down and wait for help to arrive? If rule of law around the country is still there, that's probably the best situation. If emergency services are still functional, then let's stabilize ourselves. Let's wait to be rescued in some situations. In other situations, you may have to res rescue yourself. They can't get to you. You know, it's impossible. And there's been thousands of examples of that, that emergency services, as expert as they are, as brave as the men and women who serve in the fire departments and medical teams around the country, sometimes they can't get to you. And again, that, that self-reliance has to come to the forefront. You know, that belief that you can get out of it you know, take a deep breath, just like we do, you know, when we're running and gunning, de-stress yourself and press on. Make good decisions and save yourself and maybe the people next to you if you possibly can. Um, there may be situations too, and this is not not foundational in my opinion to my urban survival kit, but there may be situations where violence starts coming out in the cities, okay? Might be rioting. You know, mass hysteria, people attacking one another, maybe with lethal means. I don't know. Again, that's not foundational and that's not the core of what it is. We're not hoping for that. In fact, uh, we're hoping for just the opposite. We are going to have a few things in our kits to address self-defense. and But that's all it is. We're not G.I. Joe out there. We're like a Navy SEAL all alone with no other team members deep behind enemy lines. Okay, we're going to do everything in our power to de-conflict, avoid conflict, get away. You, you, there's no way you're going to have capabilities um, to address anything else. Um, that being said, though, you might have to to survive, and you might be completely justified in doing that. You might be completely attacked and assaulted by what we also we call, call in the project the wolves of society. They see you as you know target of opportunity, and they're going to kill you that day. There are people in the world that do that. There's evil out there. We've discussed this. We've established that concept. We don't dwell on it though. We just make some preparations and we play it smart. When things go south in an urban situation, by the way, um, there's another foundational concept to my kit is you need to blend in. Okay? You don't want to stand out. You don't want to look militaristic. You don't want to look tactical in any way. You want to look very unassuming. Okay, unassuming blends, and that's what you want. You want to use excellent camouflage and look just like everybody else. That urban uh, situation, you know, people who stand out may become those targets of opportunity. And again, this is just one of many variables, but you know, if WROL ensues. So play it cool, play it cool. Um, why do I mention that? Because it kind of drives for instance, what kind of backpack do you use? What kind of carry system do you use? You know, to walk out there with a tactical vest on, granted, it'd be an awesome way to carry all your stuff, just like the US Air Force survival vest I reviewed, uh, seems like a lifetime ago. You know, it's a great way to carry it. That's why the Air Force uses it. You know, it's, uh, the weight is situa situated uh, symmetrically around the body. You have pockets for organization. This pocket contains my fire items, you know, compass and whatnot. Great, it's awesome. Do I want to be seen walking down the street, you know, in Philadelphia when things go bad? Not me. 
I stand out. You know, I want to blend. I don't want to look any different than anybody else. You know, if I have a backpack on, which you're probably going to have a backpack on, or maybe something smaller, low key, baby, low key. That is another concept to the Nut and Fancy Urban Survival Kit. Another concept of my kit philosophy is redundancy. On the very important items that I like, and I kind of adopt this as well for my other survival uh, philosophies, I don't mind some redundancy. And there's some good reasons for it. We're going to talk when we start reviewing the kit. Um, and my redundancy and what I think is good to have, uh, you know, two things of might be different than yours. You may say, well, I don't need two of those items. One's just fine or none is just fine. I understand that. Also, and are you listening? This is very, very crucial. I'm going to talk about it and other things. And it is the principle of write off. That's what I'm going to call it. When you put your kit together and if you really need your urban survival kit, you basically have to write off everything you've put in that kit. You don't use it for any other situation. It stays and it is completely dedicated to your USK, Urban Survival Kit. Yeah, we'll call it USK. Okay, it's gone. It's as far as you you know, it's gone. But wait, I want to use that item for camping. Nope, don't do it. Don't do it. Speaking from experience, why? Because you're going to break into that survival kit. You're going to take that item, and it will never get replaced. You mean to replace it, but life ensues. You get busy. You don't do it. Next thing you know, your survival kit's completely incomplete. Don't do it. What, what's the downside to that? A lot. It's going to be more expensive because you're going to be buying maybe doubles of something. Maybe it's a stove, maybe it's a, uh, a knife, a multi-tool, and you're just dedicating it to your USK. You know, oh well, you know, it's a write-off. You have to abide by that. If you don't do it, you're not going to have a complete survival kit. Now, parameters for use. When do I break into the survival kit? You know, end of the world, everything's happening? Heck no. It's for your use as you see fit. Excuse me. It doesn't mean that, you know, things are just, you know, ballooning up into, you know, WROL. It could be something much less than that. And yes, of course, according to your own judgment, break into your urban survival kit. Use those items. You have to replenish though. You have to replenish. Again, driving back to the preparedness factor. If you do not do it, and I address these principles in my first aid kit videos, right? That if you break in there, you better replenish it. Uh, because next thing you know, you're going to need those items and you go, oh crap, I forgot to you know, stock it up again. Not good, not good. So you have to buy that right off, replenish, keep your kit prepared, get it ready to rock and roll. You'll be glad you did. Couple other things. The USK I'm going to show you is not waterproof. I think a lot of guys also kid themselves on what is waterproof. They may put things in plastic bags. You'll see I use that organization system too, just like I do in my level one, level two first aid kits. But don't kid yourself. Don't think they're waterproof. And I mentioned that in those first aid videos. Um, it's better than nothing. And for me though, it's more of an organizational way and maybe perhaps to protect against some moisture. But through wear and tear, through them rubbing, through sharp objects coming in and poking those uh, baggies, you're probably going to have some water ingress. Even with super high quality um, Mylar bags, which I've shown you guys, I may talk to that here in the series as well, but don't expect it to be waterproof. Um, also, weight is not my primary co concern with the USK. Why is that? Because I'm opting for firepower. There are certain items that I really want to have in my urban survival kit that I know are going to be heavier, that are going to take up room, but I really want to have them. Okay, and um, you know, size is also going to be very relative and very personal to you. How big can your survival kit be? Does it have to fit into your briefcase? You know, does it have to fit into another backpack? You know, again, uh, SAWC size and weight constraints are going to play. You're going to have to make some hard choices on which items you can take uh, and which you have to leave behind. For me and the kit I'm going to show you. I opted for more firepower. It is not the smallest kit out there. There's probably some other guys have versions of their own that are smaller and lighter than mine. Uh, mine's 23 pounds, dudes. I just weighed it. So yeah, that's kind of stout. And uh, as you'll see though, fair amount of capabilities in there. Um, there's some other capabilities that we just cannot contain because SAWC. We can't. But 
if we could pre-position them, okay, that's another concept foundational to this review, you should do so. In other words, if I live and work in a high-rise building, I'm going to talk to some things which I think could maybe save your life. Um, if something goes really bad in your urban situation, pre-position it though. Maybe it's not in your, in your backpack or your carry system, whatever you've chosen. However, um, they're right beside your desk. And since you work there every day, they're there all the time and you don't have to worry about it. And if something happens, you have them. So pre-position. There's probably some other stuff I thought uh, I forgot about, but you know what? Let's get to it. Uh, I'll probably try to make these 40 minutes around there, give or take, you know, in length, and I don't know how many segments it's going to be. We're just going to get in there, start talking the philosophy. I'll start telling you how I thought uh, when I put this thing together, and again, might help you in your own urban survival kit. Let's get to it. Small Kelty backpack forms the carry case for the Nut and Fancy version one of the USK Urban Survival Kit. And in many ways, uh, this carry case was dictated by the capabilities that I wanted to incorporate. There's lots of different carry cases we could choose for your USK. As I break into it and I show you all the capabilities or the things that I have inside, you know, you're going to see why I kind of needed this size. You know what I think too? I think it's big. This is big and it's bulky. I'm not going to lie to you. 23 pounds for a survival kit is stout. Sh sure enough. Um, could we make it smaller? Yes. Now, as I come to the end of the series, I'm going to do what I can. Or maybe as I go along showing you, hey, you know, you could pair this out. You could put this one thing in and make it, you know, smaller. Um, but, you know, some capabilities like for instance here here's a full water bottle that adds weight it adds bulk but I have water you know if something goes wrong with the water system at least I have something remember I said you might want to be getting away from that urban setting you might be getting the heck out of Dodge you know capabilities water I don't know what Kelty backpack this is I forget it's just a lightweight Kelty um, day pack that I bought at Costco for heck is like 16 bucks if that ripstop nylon pretty nice uh, not I don't believe it has an integrated um, well it did not come with a camelback bladder I'll address that and well, I'll address it right now I don't have a camelback on this thing right now uh, I don't think it's necessary it takes up weight uh, actually more space than I need I'm just going with a bot water bottle uh, I don't need a camelback it's convenient to have don't need it as long as I have a bottle or some way to hydrate good to go I've used that system long before camelbacks ever came along if you want to integrate one I say go ahead this is not the ideal color either it is good for the camera however because you can see the features better the best color for your carry system whatever you choose is black okay it blends in it's low-key and I think it's the absolute best color out there do you have to use a day pack nope you don't you can use a whole number of carry systems for your USK. It just depends, again, how big it is, you know, and what kind of, you know, capabilities you're going to integrate. You will generally find, though, you're going to run out of space, especially if you want to integrate the stuff that I want to show you. Um, the Versa Packs by Maxpedition, they have a whole different variety of them, as you can see there. They're interesting. They're cool. Um, not for me. I don't really like an asymmetric carry method. That is where I have just one strap going across my shoulder. Uh, I don't like that. I'd rather have a backpack, two weight supporting straps that are symmetrical. Works for me. And I've got good, you know, a sternum strap, a waist belt of some sort to transfer the weight. Um, that's what I do. Um, would I use a camelback backpack? They make some outstanding. Uh, backpacks, uh, yeah, if I can get it in black. Going back to one of my foundational things for the USK, I would not choose a camouflage pattern of any kind. I wouldn't go ACU, I wouldn't go multicam. Um, this is kind of pushing it, this tan. Why? Because you kind of get into that militaristic tactical look that you want to avoid in the urban environment. You know, that's just me. I probably would steer away from it. But don't get too hung up on the carry system. Make sure it's high quality. Um, that has a good suspension system for the weight you've chosen to carry. Make sure it's roomy enough. And as you can see, I got this little thing maxed out. OK, 
okay? Stretching those zippers because there's a lot in there. Um, but again, the day pack or your carry system is not super critical. I'm going to show you another th uh, one of the vanity carry cases that I've shown you before in the level 2 kit for a very small USK that would be very functional. This thing ain't going to fit in a, uh, in a briefcase, obviously. This is on the big side again. Um, maybe your USK will. Okay, enough said on the carry cases. I might have forgotten stuff and I may mention some more as we go along. What are these doing on the outside? These are reflective strips, okay? You can't tell now, but when you shine a flashlight on these, they'll glow. I have two of them. Also doubling as leg bands so I can be seen. Okay, additionally, and I have this in my BOKs, a fluorescent vest with the same concept that you can put over your you know top half like you see me zootering why so you can be seen you know I'm amazed at the number of joggers and walkers and bicyclists I see at night that have no reflectivity on them whatsoever and they are taking their lives into their own hands I do not recommend it and again in rule of law situations you want to help emergency services locate you so you can be rescued okay that's one reason I have them secondly is to find the kit all power may be going out. You may have a flashlight on your person. I always carry a flashlight. Okay, you should too, as an EDC light. And mine is a Streamlight Stylus Pro. At least have that, maybe a Phoenix or something on my person. Shine it and you'll be able to see your USK. There it is, grab it, you're in business. It's kind of that lifeline, the link to the lifeline. That's why it's out there. Carabiner, that's an easy way to hook the pack onto something. You might be using a vehicle, a loaner vehicle, and someone may you know, give you a ride or something. This is an all-purpose attachment device. Not necessarily to here. Could be through a carry strap, through both of these carry straps. Carabiner's nice to have to clip it, and it's strong. This is a full-weight climbing carabiner. And by the way, in those high-rise locations, we may be using this as well with another system I'm gonna discuss. I already showed you the water. A couple things, though. The water is, uh, will adapt to the water filter. Yep, I have a water filter inside there. I'll tell you why here in a bit but that will screw onto the water filter. You can filter water with it, and it has a covered lid. See that? That is very handy because of dusty environments, just like 9-11, when those buildings collapsed, dust went everywhere, okay? And everybody was breathing it, it's choking eyes and everything, ugly. Another side pocket. This is an, uh, a luxury item. Not necessary is be one of the items you could pitch, and that would be a set of optics. Binoculars in this case. I would actually prefer a monocular, but it's dedicated, remember the concept of write-off, to another system I have. So I don't have it here. These are some old 10 power Nikon Sport Stars that I have. Great binos for the price. Okay, and if you want really awesome binos, you can again reference my Monarch um, binos by Nikon. I have a whole series of vids on that, but they're bigger. These are more compact. Why binoculars? Well, you, again, getting back to the very urban, th um, survive uh, environment with you know skyscrapers and stuff you might be in a situation where you can't see what's going on who's doing what who's where optics would be nice maybe you could keep a tab on hey you know is that rescue down there and you can implement signaling procedures uh, so in a way it's just kind of an intelligence gathering device for you so you're aware of what's going on there's other things we're going to have in our USK that will do the same thing how important it to have binos or again my favorite is that little miniature um, doctor optic and it's about eight power uh, I'll see if I can find a picture of it for you if I can't I'll just have to describe it what a great little optic that is and I have it in my other kit sorry I can't show that to you right now it's uh, not with me right now um, but it's great and it's more compact than this and again um, there's some other ones as well don't chintz too much on your optics so if they're important to you you know the cheap ones you find in Walmart or wherever uh, you get what you pay for. You know, if you're going to look through them for maybe 20 seconds, they'll probably be enough. But if you need light ga gathering capability, the ability to discern definition, uh, low light capability, then you want good lens coatings and, you know, lens construction, all the stuff that I talked about in my Monarch review. Just something to think of. Do rag on the side. Why a do rag? Crazy. You've never seen me wear that, have you? Uh, I do occasionally, though. Uh, one for sweat. Uh, you may be working, you might be engaged in rescue activities where you're really going to be generating a lot of sweat. That's job one. Number two, remember the concept, 
concept of blending. Okay, a do rag can do that. <laughs> I'm not saying you want to look like the indigenous people or whatever, but uh, you know, you you want to blend as best you can. Um, just something, and I don't have any other clothing items in here other than gloves. That again takes up a lot of space, adds more room. You'll have to make your own decisions. Fuel cartridge, propane variety, half size. It's not very big, therefore it's not going to run a lot, but I got it. Okay, and yes, I have a stove that works on it. Uh, and it's that MSR, that little MSR jet fire, whatever that thing is called. I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, let's break it open. Okay, there's two major compartments to this Kelty backpack. And I wasn't really particular on where I'm jamming everything because it just has to fit. Uh, and that's job one, making everything fit. And you should learn where everything's at, of course. Um, but making everything... <laughs> Fit in there as you can see it was a big job oh by the way I forgot to mention this hank of rope on the exterior of the USK why again kind of like the carabiner so I can tie it to different uh, different things you know I might have to lash it to a vehicle I might have to uh, drop it down you know if I'm extricating myself through wreckage of a building I can't carry my backpack with me I have to lower it here's your hank of rope already there Measured out. I think this is not a super long hank, like 20 foot or so. I have more inside of a different rope. Um, but just a concept. I think all survival kits should have a hank of rope. Sturdy variety. Not the thin, but see how thick that nylon rope is? Kind of like that. Could come in big handy. Uh, titanium cook set. You know what? Sadly, Missing gave me this. I didn't buy it. And nor do I recommend you go out and buy a titanium cook set. It, actually, it's not a cook set. All it is is just a titanium cup with a lid on it. But that was pretty cool. You know, uh, so that was a gift and uh, I use it. Lightweight, compact, a lid for boiling water. I can use it for drinking as well. Mixing up stuff. Uh, and one of the things I don't have in my kit to show you that I recommend is probably some sort of Gatorade powder. Powder, an electrolyte replacement drink and this would be another way to do it. I can mix it in the bottle over here of course but a covered lid for cooking food. I do have a little bit with me in the USK. That's an option. Here's my Lexan utensils jammed into the pocket and organizational pocket of the backpack and I don't just have a spork. Why? Because these don't weigh anything. Why not have all three? Knife, good spoon, good fork. Okay, they're next to nothing in weight, and I do have the space, albeit not a lot, I carry all three with me. Always be ready for chow. You never wear, you never know where it's going to come from. Breaking into here. Ooh, radio. That's right. This is one of those Dynamo solar radios. I don't have a lot of experience with this. I don't know how high quality it is. I have used them gently, but I haven't put them through a survival situation. They're carried by a lot of survival outlets online. You've seen them. They're around 30 bucks on sale, maybe around 22 to 25. And for you guys who don't know what it is, uh, it has an integrated flashlight, which I go, oh, okay, not really. I don't have it for that. But it has a crank that I can crank it up. Okay, and that will take the place of batteries. I can turn the radio on, you know whatever I need to. Uh, and then it has a flashing red light function as well. It takes an AC adapter that you can get, you have to buy it separately, also takes batteries. By the way, and this is a concept that's gonna be in the USK all through, I should replace those if I'm gonna keep it in the USK with lithium batteries. Alkaline batteries will go dead over time, uh, they'll cause problems, or maybe I'll just keep the batteries out of it altogether, keep them separately. That's the safest way so they don't corrode the terminals. Alkaline batteries, though, probably shouldn't be trusted. It has an antenna, supposedly solar-powered as well. You're going to need a lot of sun to power it, though. And the flashlight, of course, takes a lot of energy. Um, you're probably going to need these batteries to do it or really cranking that a lot. Uh, fairly compact. The sound is good. It brings in stations uh, pretty impressively, actually. The downside to this whole unit is it's kind of big and bulky, I think. There are better choices out there as well. Um, and you don't have to use this. And I, as I go through my USK, I'm going to try to roll in some of these options. And let me see where did that one go. Here's one. This is just an old, realistic, that's a Radio Shack brand. 
AM FM, AM FM transistor radio. This particular one is powered by a nine volt battery on the bottom here. A Little bit more compact. And by the way, I don't want you guys to think that you have to have a hand cranked radio. Uh, not necessary because hopefully your situation in the urban setting is going to be short term. Okay, and the reason I like this option is because of Murphy's Law. You know, even though you meant to have the batteries, you checked your batteries, what do you know? You don't have the batteries or you left the radio on and they're dead. You know, all kinds of reasons why your battery option may fail you. The crank option is good in that situation. Okay, this is a good radio. I've had it in the family for years. I could very easily pack this. I would save a little bit of weight, a little bit of space. And then uh, I'm gonna roll in some other pictures of good options that I went to uh, at amazon.com. Okay, and they have some very cool Panasonic transistor radios which have the advantage of being double A powered. And then also a Sony version too, double A powered for just $10. And some of them even have free shipping. Those would be very good choices for uh, your USK and also your BOK as well. Um, and for you European viewers that have different stations, you could go with one of the Grundig options, which are both shortwave uh, and other band capable there for European stations. So um, some uh, options for you. Why a radio? Again, for intelligence gathering. I hate to use that term because it sounds so military, but just knowing what's going on. I mean, this is an information and a news source you want to be dialed in. Definitely have a radio of some sort with you. Okay, and uh, my first option, probably if you guys are going to ask me, is probably go with this. A, just a regular transistor radio, double, double check. You have lithium, not alkaline batteries, and plenty of them. You'll see that in the kit here for your transistor radio, this is also a good option too. Slight increase of weight, you do have a flashing signaling option. Again, to, in my opinion, that's kind of hokey. I'm, I'm using this mostly for the crank capability and the AM and FM capability. Okay, there's the radio. Man, this time is just flying. I'm gonna talk about this later. Hopefully I will not forget. Then we get into, oh, first defensive option. Pepper spray, what? Nothing fancy, that's a huge bottle of pepper spray. I know, I know. Keep in mind though, you are in an urban environment, okay, and where there's an urban environment, you are going to have lots of people. This is a non-lethal way to protect yourself, and more importantly, get out of Dodge. Okay, that's what you want. You wanna get out of there. Um, and what brand is this? I wouldn't get too wrapped up on the brand. This is that bear spray. Okay, and it has a really cool holster that comes with it. There you see it, UDAP pepper spray. I think it's 10% oloresin capsicum. Uh, yeah, it's nasty stuff. And it has a safety, glow-in-the-dark safety. You pop this off like that, go in here, and you're ready to shoot. And I kind of think this as a miniature riot control device. Notice I said miniature. Uh, in other words, let me go through here. In other words, uh, I can control a situation to a certain degree with this and then flee, get out of there. Are there other pepper spray options I recommend? You bet. Again, don't get too wrapped up on the brand of pepper spray. Maybe your USK has less room and so you wanna go with the 45 gram size, 1.6 ounce. This is good too, won't have as many shots, probably won't have the range, distance, and firepower that this one will, but better than nothing. Again, this is one of those devices that you're going to have to make the call on. Is it legal where I live? Can I use it? Don't know. Don't know where you live. Don't know what your, you know, your situation is. Um, which one to go with? Do I go with regular pepper spray with streams or do I go with a pepper gel or a foam? I generally like the foam, um, but either one's good. Uh, the foam is nice because it adheres to the skin. The bad guy has to wipe it from their skin. You know, it just becomes a nasty mess. These take some training and some forethought to use. Don't think you can just take pepper spray and you've got all your bases covered. If you shoot it into the wind and it blows right back into your face, what good have you done? Okay, these are some considerations you need to use. And a lot of the stuff we're gonna talk about in the Nut and Fancy USK are like that. You're gonna to have to be proficient, wise, and smart in their use, and this is one of those items. 
for me though, my USK, if I'm no kidding in an urban environment uh, with lots of people and I have maybe a riot potential or maybe bands of people that are maybe, I don't know, you know, trying to control my actions and I cannot reason my way out of it, good option. And yeah, I like that size. Guys will be saying, well, what size is this? Well, I don't know offhand. I'm going to have to look. Eight ounces. There you see it. Eight ounces, 225 grams. Um, good stuff. Good stuff. And have options. Uh, if you go with the little tiny containers of pepper spray, you know, you're not going to have a lot of, lot of distance, range, and capability. Next up. Oh, dude, it just starts getting more interesting from here. This is my communications pack, and I actually kind of subdivide my urban survival kit into different areas. Uh, you have, you know, comms, shelter, tools, weapons, hygiene, and things along that line. You don't have to subdivide everything like I've done into this zip pouch. And let me just talk about it. the guys are going to say, where you? they always want to know where I get everything. Um, this is just a regular organizational pouch. I think Camp Moore sells them. Uh, I think I got this one from a place called Sportsman's Warehouse. Okay, and that's uh, had them, and they were very inexpensive. This one was like $3. Uh, Cabela's makes them, and they catalog them as well. There's several ways uh, to accomplish this. I like it better than a plastic bag for several reasons. One, like I've already discussed, a plastic bag will not and does not guarantee waterproofness. It's probably going to be compromised, just like I talked about in the foundational intro. So if I know that, wouldn't it be better to have a more durable kit or container for what is now you know, my communications pack? And that way I can access it, upgrade it, and easily identify it. Red would be the color of this one. I could take a Sharpie and write comms on the back of it and make it dedicated. Okay, enough said. Let's get into it. First off, whistles. 